we made it to Spain. So we're staying at this hotel on recommendation from our friends Tyler and Anya. It's wild. It is a bunch of buildings that have been connected into a hotel. Um, this used to be the old Jewish quarters in Seville. And so there's tunnels everywhere and different shaped rooms and passageways and colors and plants. A rooftop pool. It's awesome. All the rooms are very old style looking. So it's definitely not extremely comfortable. Yeah, it's probably the most unique hotel I've ever stayed in where every room is different. We keep getting lost trying to navigate where to go. There's tunnels, there's passageways, there's doors we keep finding, there's elevators apparently. There's windows in the most random places, like this this size in our bathroom. It's wild. So the first day we kind of just checked out around our hotel. We went for brunch, which gave us very Bali vibes at Moya brunch. It was pretty good brunch. And then we just came back and explored our hotel and hit the rooftop pool, which was a great idea at the time until Davy burnt his sunburn and it has blistered. It's really bad and I feel very sad for him, but he's somehow not complaining. I would be crying. I believe we're staying in fairly central Seville. The roads and streets we've been walking have been similar to the other places that we visited, very narrow. Here, they seem extra narrow with the inclusion that cars can also drive on them. Everything looks super beautiful, similar to Portugal, but everything seems to have warmer colors. And instead of just beautiful doorways, the entire buildings are quite beautiful. Yeah, it's been really fun to walk around and be surprised at every corner. Again, the streets have no rhyme or reason to how they're laid out. Very easy to get lost if you don't have Google Maps. We're being told to turn down places and you can't tell that it's a, a road or a passageway until you get right to it. It's so small or skinny. Everyone here has been extremely friendly though. Super, super nice. It's funny, some of the places you go, it seems like they know English super well and other places, it's like they only know Spanish. <laughs> and so I really wish we knew a little bit more Spanish to help us get by. Everything seems to have worked out. They end up figuring out what we want. So we really appreciate that. It seems like the hours that people operate here is offset by a couple hours. Restaurants and businesses open at 9 a.m. and everything seems to close at midnight. And everyone also takes a break in the middle of the day at like 2 p.m. for lunch generally, which is nice because that is also like the hottest part of the day. So I'm sure they're all just itching to have a break. However, if you want to have lunch, you gotta wait different hours and even us, we seem to be having dinner at like 8 or 9 p.m., which is very Spanish. So we had a very relaxing first day. We just chilled in the pool, which was much needed. And we had a shower and we went in search of dinner to Mama Racha Tapas. So good. I don't remember how I found it, but I was very excited to try it. We ended up getting this grilled artichoke with prosciutto and egg, which was like the best way I've ever eaten artichoke. I've never had it like that. And I loved it. And then we also got some sort of salmon dish and we got just the olives. We can't get enough of the olives. Anywhere that makes their own olives, I feel, the olives are just better. Oh yes, Davy's favorite dish of the night. Just a giant pot of melted cheese. It was really good though. The nice thing about ordering tapas here is that you can get four of them or five of them with a drink for less than what you'd pay for two entrees back in North America. So I feel encouraged to try a bunch of food and still be the same amount of full instead of just ordering a single dish. We tend to be a bit more adventurous eaters and so tapas has been amazing for us because we get to try things we normally wouldn't. So far we've liked everything too, so that has been great. The next morning we woke up really early in hopes of checking out this thing called the Citas. We walked all the way there only to realize that it does have hours. It only opens at 9.30. We got there at 7.30 and all these gates are up around it. You can look at it from the bottom, but you can't go up a floor. Since that didn't plan out, we were like, ah, we'll just head over to the Royal Alcazar. We grabbed a little breakfast at Bio Mio, Bio Mio, and then we got to the Royal Alcazar and we were like, oh, we must be the only ones here. We got tickets at the ticket office and then walked around the corner and there was a massive line. Everybody was there 
Obviously, it's a big tourist destination here in Seville. We're really glad we got tickets for 9.30. We went in and it was pretty impressive. Comparing it to Versailles, which we saw in France, was very different for us. Yeah, compared to Versailles, it was a very different experience. It was a lot more chill to go through, a lot less rooms to visit, but it was a lot more indoor, outdoor space. Um, it was far less ornate and high class. The architecture is different and the, the people who built those things, their values were different. And so this palace, while still incredibly beautiful, just doesn't have like crazy, crazy minute details. But everything was super colorful and the windows were exceptional, lots of symmetry. Yeah, definitely glad we went. It was a couple bucks to get in, but well worth it. We spent uh, maybe an hour, an hour and a half there, and we didn't even see all of it. We could have spent a little bit more time. Even the gardens outside were really beautiful. And then we came back to the hotel because you got to take advantage of how incredible it is. And we just sat out at the pool again. It gets really hot here, so that pool is necessary. If you're gonna come to Seville and you're not gonna stay here, just make sure your hotel hit the pool. We went for dinner, every single meal. We're eating out. We haven't had a home cooked meal in a while. That's okay. I love it. Yeah, I mean, everything feels fresh. Everything tastes pretty local. Mm -hmm. I think I'm losing weight, even though we're just eating a lots of bread and meat. Um, so we went to a spot closer to the river called the Changa Tapas. I think again, because it was a little bit out of the way that most of the tourists are at, it was cheaper and the food was also incredible. Davey saw the pot of melted cheese on the menu and he was sold. We got melted cheese again. I got mussels finally. They were good. They were whatever. <laughs> they didn't really have a taste to them. We also got the risotto, which came a lot of people on Google recommended, and the pork cheek. Both of those dishes, incredible. It's very interesting. There is so many restaurants. Like on a typical block, there's probably four restaurants. So within eyesight, you can see 12, 15 restaurants and they are all beautiful and I can only imagine that each one is incredible. It's interesting to walk around during dinner time, which would be eight o'clock or 10 o'clock for these people. The streets are completely full of people. Everybody's dressed up like they're going out for a meal and every restaurant and bar is full. Yeah, I will say here in Spain so far, the restaurants have had way more distinguishing factors, it seems like everyone really cares about their decor, about their branding, the name, like it looks really beautiful from the outside and the inside. Whereas in Portugal, I feel like there wasn't as much of that. Like there was some here and there, especially in Lisbon, it got more. In Lagos and Porto, it was like, you, there was no way to tell one from the other. Luckily dinner ended and it was right around golden hour. So we walked to the river, which is really close by. Everyone seems to really enjoy hanging out at the park there. We went up to this bridge and everything was beautiful. Like. When you talk about golden hour, that was golden hour. Everything really looked gold. It was really fun to see way more locals out living life. So on our final morning in Seville, we decided we had to try and go back to Citas. Luckily, we slept in a little bit more since we knew it opened at 9.30. We got there and were able to take pictures underneath and it was pretty quiet, which was very different than the Alcazar, I feel. There were definitely people coming, but it was nowhere near as much as the Alcazar. It was such a crazy structure. Everywhere you look is just beautiful and expansive. Just really, really cool to have in the middle of a city. We bought tickets to go up just to the viewing platform and they were only five euros each. Yeah, I think we had an incredible time there. We're really glad we did it. Man, the sun here is hot. Oh boy, I'm cooking now and I'm in the shade. So up there, right in the bright sun, is hot. But it was beautiful. Glad we did it. This is really cool. I had no idea this existed. Apparently it's been around for 11 years already. It's pretty wild. Everything's made out of wood. Then we got brunch at La Mala Cafe, La Mala Brunch. It was delicious. Very much like Instagram aesthetic style menu, I feel. We had smoothie bowls, pancakes that were beautiful and delicious. And again, that one seemed to be a bit more better priced than some of the ones we've been to. Not sure if it's because it's sort of out of the tourist zone. Yeah, it was really good. I'm glad we went. I think for what we ordered would have cost us maybe double back in North America. So it's not dirt cheap, but it's definitely much cheaper and more affordable to eat quality food out here. And now it's our final day in Seville and I'm just trying to avoid the sun until we have to catch a train to Madrid. See you there. <laughs> <laughs>